when you know maybe you could have thrown in the towel. And especially in this day and age where you know transfer portal so uh, prevalent, you know he could have thrown in the towel and, and had a foot out the door. But you know to, for him to have do a gesture like that, I think that it just shows how he was still um, locked in and still team oriented even um, after you know a disappointment like that. So, hey, uh, Xavier, so what have you thought of Texas so far? Uh, I love it. Um, I'm obviously I'm from Ohio, um, so it's a little different. We, we did like a hat bar and some some things yesterday, and I didn't really know what a hat bar was, but I got my first cowboy hat yesterday. Um, um, and I actually, um, I, I was in Texas for spring break over, obviously, this past spring, um, so I really enjoyed it. Um, great food. Um, yeah, everything's bigger in Texas, like they say. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, when you look at this Missouri defense and, and, and DBs particular and just even straight at quarter position, just what have you seen from them and, and you know, what do you expect as far as that matchup goes? Um, I, th I think you see you know, well-coached uh, players, um, good players, um, players who have playmaking ability. Um, and I think that you know uh, you see a physicality um, that they bring, um, and so I think that uh, for for us it's going to be a key to master physicality, um, and play and execute at the high level that we play and execute at. Um, and I think that when if we uh, check those boxes, we'll like what we see. With Devin getting his first start, how can you as the receiver core help him make the game easier for the second and three Uh Yeah, Coach Hart does it. He does a great job, and, and he emphasizes the fact that we we basically are. Uh, our goal is to minimize the, the mistakes, um, and so if the ball's maybe a, a yard for a, too far, that's on us. We got to figure out how we can get that yard back. Um, and so, um, just as as receivers, you know, we got to uh, execute at that at a high level, um, so that he can play with confidence, and so he doesn't have to worry about you know maybe the the, the little things, um, and he can just really trust himself and rip the ball. Coming up against Missouri team that's probably playing its biggest game in, in nearly a decade. Just how do you match maybe the motivation that they will bring into the game as you know team that's been in the playoff and you know, big games in the past few years? How do you, how do you match them? How, how do they, they will be for, for Friday's game? Yeah, um, I think it's important <coughs> not to minimize the game, um, but I think that you do that by. Um, having the right guys um, in the locker room, um, and having you know guys who are, are going to appreciate the game, um, not just because you know it's, it's against or it's in the CFP or whatnot, um, but just appreciate the game because we love the game. Um, so to, to match the motivation, I think that you know if you have to motivate somebody to go out there and play um, on national stage, you got the wrong guy. Um, so I think that we are blessed um, to have and Coach Day did a great job in all the co uh, recruiting uh, coaches. Uh, do a great job of bringing in uh, men who you know, love the game and who appreciate the game and who aren't going to minimize uh, you know, another opportunity because you never know what's going to be your last. Um, so I think you know, just allowing that um, along with the fact that you know, there's just people like myself, like uh, Cade and different people who have poured so much into the program, poured so much into the people in the division, um, and kind of allowing people are acknowledging the fact that it's our last game um, and a kind of trying to send us out on a right note. Um, I think that, that uh, Coach Day's done a great job kind of drafting those, those, uh, those couple points on Is there do you think a misconception that maybe Ohio State players do care less than, than Missouri do here? Um, yeah, I definitely think it's a misconception. I think you know a lot of a lot of people. Uh, there's kind of a so I've heard there's kind of a uh, stereotype that you know, Ohio State um, are kind of some dealers um, in, in a, a way, um, and I think. Uh, that when you see the way we approach the game, when you see the way that we play the game, um, when you really look at how we play for each other, um, that, that narrative um, isn't necessarily true. Um, so I think that uh, when it comes to this game specifically, you're going to see a whole bunch of young, hungry young men, um, hungry brothers who are coming out, uh, trying to put a uh, stamp on the 2023 season. Um, and we pour so much into it, we sacrifice so much, and it's only right that we uh, go out there and give it our best and give it our all. Actually, if, if people knew your story, do you think they'd still call you a diva? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, how much? How much have you thought about this being your last game at Ohio State? Um, I've thought about it a lot, um, and uh, you know, different different moments. Um, it just hits me like this will be my last Thursday practice, or you know, my last practice as a Woody as a player, like my last time entering the Woody as a player. You know, different things like that um, hit me randomly, um, and so. You know, it's a, it is uh, kind of surreal for being for six years. I've 
become accustomed to uh, the way we do things at Ohio State. Um, that's been my regiment. That's been my uh, routine for for six years now. And so, um, just kind of knowing that this is my last time and, and, and um, trying to truly uh, cherish things. I I, tr I struggle I struggle st uh, stopping to smell the roses at, at times in my life. So I've been uh, very intentional in trying to do so, kind of with this game. That last practice at the Woody, did you like? Take a look around. You know? Yes, uh, took a look around. You know, took it all in, and really was just uh, grateful to be a part of a, a great university um, like Ohio State. I'm grateful to be a part of something that you know is not a lot of places, um, and that's the building all the way down to the to the you know the uh, custodians. Um, it's just a different place. Um, Woody Hayes said, you know, you went with people, um, and I think that Ohio State has taken that um, and ran with it. Um, great people all throughout the building. So just to be um, amongst them. Um, and to, to learn from them, to love on them, to try to pour back into you know people coming behind me. Um, it's been an honor and a privilege. So. And then the last thing for me, what's Devin Brown like off the field? Uh, Devin Brown off the field, he's, he's a very personable guy. You know, someone who you, you want to talk to, someone you want to be around. I think you need that, um, and, and somebody who you can, you know, you can really trust. Um, so. Um, I we I've had a, I've had a relationship with Devin off the field. You know, it's not just something where he's just the, the person throwing me the ball and, and, and on sitting in the locker room somewhere. You know, we have a relationship off the field. So I think that really helps the transition um, and trust um, factor even even all the more. Thank you, Xavier Martin.